King of Strongcliff has just woken up from a night of partying and drinking with the women, but he's still hungry for more. On his way to find the next prey, he is suddenly attracted by a beautiful voice. He climbs up to the castle and looks out the window to see the back of a woman. The lascivious king instantly gets horny and asks her to turn around. To his surprise, once she hears his lustful flirtations, she hides in her room. So he takes a precious necklace from his jewelry box and sends his guard to deliver it. As soon as the guard knocks on the door, the pulley mechanism on her doorstep is activated. Instead of opening the door, she asks the guard to put the gift in a basket. Little does the philandering king realize that he is not captivated by a beautiful young woman, but by two ugly old ladies. The vain Dora won't let go of the dazzling necklace. She won't let her sister, Emma, touch it and even keeps it all to herself. At night, after praying, the two old sisters undress and are ready to go to bed. Suddenly, the king knocks on the door and insists on seeing the beautiful girl. The straightforward Emma tries to clear up the misunderstanding, but Dora puts her hand over her mouth and prevents her from doing so. The ambitious Dora pushes Emma away and speaks in a valley girl accent, saying that she's just a poor girl who doesn't match the king. You, you can't imagine how the modesty of this young virgin is being put to the test by your offer. In order to appease the king, who is going crazy with desire, Dora asks him to give her a week to prepare, at which time she will show him one of her rosy maidenly fingers. Though the king is confused, he is willing to wait as soon as he imagines how stunning the maiden is at the door. Dora also begins to try to tenderize her rough, cracked fingers. Dora rubs the front and back of her index finger vigorously with garlic. Then she dabs the tip of her finger with a bit of wax and fries it in a hot pot. In the end, she wraps her index finger in a strip of cloth, forcing it through the pane. The reason she does this is because she's heard that it makes aging skin soft and tender. After a week, Dora takes off the bandage with great anticipation. To her horror, her index finger becomes drier instead of pinker. Greedy, she sheds tears of frustration. Emma leaves her work of dying and rushes to comfort her. Just then, the king's knock at the door sends the old sisters into a panic. The lascivious king has been invited to see the woman of his dreams, whom he has longed for all week. Dora, in despair, turns her head only to see Emma's index finger so smooth and tender. It is Emma's long habit of sucking on her fingers that makes them so young. So she forcibly drags Emma behind the door and sticks her index finger out of the hole, despite Emma's resistance. The king loses his mind at the sight of this lovely, fragrant finger. As king, he orders the angelic girl to come out and let him see her. Dora, who wants to be Cinderella, is ready to grant the king's desires, but to keep him from realizing that she is an ugly old woman, she asks to sleep with him in his bedchamber in total darkness. Though she is terrified of deceiving the king, Dora is overjoyed at the thought of the riches and honor it will bring her. Dora asks the naive Emma to help her look younger. So Emma applies hot glue to her wrinkled skin and tightens her sagging skin. When the glue has dried, Dora sneaks out of the house under Emma's reluctant gaze. She covers her entire body, including her face. With a thick nightgown, the guard blows out all the candles in the palace at her request. As soon as Dora enters the king's bedchamber, she takes off her robe and lies down on the bed. The king then steps out of the darkness to have intercourse with her. However, even her strong desire could not overcome the exhaustion caused by old age. The restless king wonders what the girl with whom he spent the night looks like. So he takes a candle and illuminates her face. He lifts her blanket only to see wrinkles and age spots on her skin. He gets such a shock and panic that he calls out for the guards. Dora instantly wakes up from her dream. The shameless woman could not understand why this noble man, who has always asked for her virginity, now suddenly becomes so irritable. You tricked me, you witch! You threw her out! You wanted me to come! The guards threw her out of the castle window despite her violent resistance. Luckily, the dense branches of a tree catch Dora, an old woman wrapped in a bright red sheet. Although she survives the fall, she is unhappy and complains about her fate. Her cries attract an old witch. The witch feels both sympathy and ridicule for this woman afflicted by old age. With her magic, she taps the trunk of the tree with her cane, and Dora quickly falls to the ground. The witch decides to help Dora for once, as she looks on in dismay. She treats the 80-year-old Dora like a baby and feeds her her breast milk. After the witch casts the spell everything passes, her aging skin began to turn rosy and smooth. The withered crone lying on the mossy boulder transforms into a fairy-like girl. The Enier Duel King soon moves on from his disgusting one-night stand and heads out into the forest with his guards to hunt. 
but his hunt is interrupted by a remarkable creature. The horny king spies a naked woman with long hair in the forest. He falls in love with her at first sight and proclaims her queen. But he wouldn't have guessed that the beauty is an 80-year-old woman. Upon returning to the palace, the rejuvenated Dora sends a guard to deliver wedding invitations and a luxurious gown to her sister Emma. Emma, who has always depended on her sister, is happy to know that Dora hasn't forgotten her. She arrives at the court in an extravagant gown, eagerly searching for Dora. She is overwhelmed and intimidated by the haughty and powerful people until a bejeweled young woman steps out of the crowd and catches her eye. Emma has no idea that this beautiful woman is her elderly sister, Dora. As she sits helplessly dozing in a chair, Dora pulls her into the room. Dora takes great pride in introducing herself to her. Emma can't believe that this glowing woman is the same person as her weathered sister. Dora brags that she changed her skin, but she was asleep so she didn't know what to do to rejuvenate it. She says she'll take care of Emma and make her rich and prosperous. Emma feels envious and jealous of her smooth, soft skin. Dora promises that she will never abandon Emma, but she asks her to keep it a secret. Then the newly crowned queen accompanies the king as he continues to attend events and receive congratulations. Emma follows her and watches the tricks of the circus performers. Once she experiences being respected and valued, she doesn't want to keep a low profile. Emma boasts to everyone that the queen is her sister. Anyone who hears her say this thinks she's crazy. After the party, Emma yells that she wants to see the queen because she's her sister. When Dora gets wind of this, she comes and tries to get rid of her. But Emma refuses to leave because she is tired of being alone and wants to be with Dora all the time. The ambitious Dora, who has suffered a lot of scorn and disdain to gain power and position, will not allow her annoying sister to ruin her plans. Because take a look at yourself. You're old. Old. No one would believe we're sisters. Emma, overcome with jealousy, begs Dora to tell her what she can do to become young. Actually, Dora fell asleep when she met the witch in the forest, so she really doesn't know how to do it. To drive her paranoid sister away, Dora comes up with a stupid-sounding excuse. I had myself flayed! She is going to get Emma out of the room, but then she sees the king coming towards the room. So she takes Emma to the closet and warns her to be quiet. But she couldn't have imagined how crazy her naive sister could get when she got stubborn. Emma spies the royal couple doing some intense cardio. With her 80-year dormant passion ignited, she steps out of the closet. As soon as the king sees her face he thinks of that old woman who used to deceive him. He angrily screams at the guards to throw her out. To protect her sister, Dora lies that she is her neighbor and begs the king not to hurt her. But being dependent on a man, she has no rights. It is only when she sees Emma thrown out and shouts that she wants to be with her sister that Dora realizes how foolish her sister is. Haunted by her sister's beauty, Emma returns to town. She begs a barber to change her skin. The barber convinces her that she'll die if she's flayed. She thinks he thinks she's penniless. So she proudly boasts that her sister is a queen. The barber, of course, wouldn't pay any attention to the crazy old woman. Emma finds a butcher and begs him to help her flay her. She pays him with expensive jewels and gems and proclaims that her sister is the queen. The butcher eventually accepts the business from the tearful old woman. He drives Emma deep into the forest in his carriage. Emma has no fear of what sounds like a very painful punishment, and fantasizes about being young and living happily ever after with Dora. She smiles as she steps out of the carriage, holding the butcher's hand. She is then tied to a tree trunk with a rope and watches with anticipation as he sharpens the knife. Her screams echoes throughout the forest as the butcher begins his work. Hours later, she shuffles out of the woods and trembles toward the castle. It seems as if she can't see the blood on her body or feel the pain. All she knows is that she hasn't been rejuvenated, and she wants to find out why from her sister, who has been transformed into a young woman. Eventually she falls at the castle gates, unattended. Dora has no idea that her sister would be stupid enough to do such a ridiculous thing and still go to a ceremony. Suddenly, she notices that her skin is rapidly aging and wrinkling all over her body. Fearing that the king will discover the truth, she rushes out of the ceremony and flees the castle. But little does she know that she has overestimated her importance to the king, for even though the lecherous king is surprised to see her aging for a second, he will soon find his next lover. This story is from the movie The Tale of Tales. It begins with the women's obsession with youth, beauty and wealth. Some women are willing to do whatever it takes to enjoy a life of luxury. But the vanity, jealousy and greed of human nature can never be satisfied completely. 
Even these two close sisters can't resist the lure of vanity and honor. Cowardly Emma clings to the ambitious Dora and accepts her control. What really binds them together is loneliness and poverty. So when the vain Dora becomes young and a queen, their sisterly bond breaks down. Seeing how beautiful and famous Dora is, Emma, who used to submit to her in every way, becomes sick and paranoid. She eventually becomes a ghost who lingers outside the castle, never able to enter but stubbornly unwilling to part with her sister for a single second. Dora wants to spend the night with the king even though she knows she's old. After being abandoned by the king, she becomes young and beautiful under the witch's magic. But when she gets back into the limelight, she doesn't take revenge on the king or start a new life. She marries him and becomes his plaything, living a life of luxury with the fear of being rejected every day. However, Dora couldn't enjoy the beauty of magic for the rest of her life. The second the magic wears off, she can only watch in despair as she is transformed back into an ugly old woman, fleeing in terror from the ruthless king. Whatever will be, will be. This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.